Hi, everyone. I think we are live. Uh, my name is Robert Langdon, and um, welcome to Emerge Gallery. Uh, pardon the uh, the mess in the gallery behind me. I'm sort of, I've been closed all month, and um, I am in the midst of, uh, you know, reorganizing everything, putting up a new show. We got a new show that starts uh, next Saturday that opens up. Uh, brand new show of Socrates artists, exit, exit 20 it's called. But today we are here uh, because, oh, sorry about that. Today we are here because we're gonna do the virtual tour for um, Best in Show. Best in Show is a, uh, a artsy online, uh, artsy.net online exclusive. It is 100 uh, pieces of art from 100 artists, mostly in the Hudson Valley, New York metropolitan area. Um, it is the piece that they consider their best from 2021. And um, it's really, really good. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna go through each piece um, individually and uh, talk about some of the work and some of the artists are gonna be joining me as well uh, to discuss their work. Uh, so let's, um, let me start by, well, Hold on one sec, guys. All right. We are going to start by bringing up, I haven't done this in a little bit. So the technical uh, pieces, I just need to get back into the swing of it. But in the meantime, the piece behind me is a preview for the Exit 20 show that's coming up. Um, okay. My dentist, Dr. Span, and I, I, I used to say, well, okay, here we go. Excellent. All right, so as I was saying, Exit 20 is a show of uh, best work that 100 artists consider, consider to be their best of 2021. Um, this is the uh, Emerge Gallery page. It's on artsy.net. You can do a quick search for Emerge Gallery NY and you'll see uh, the shows that we've currently got. Uh, this is the Best in Show, which we are talking about now. I also have an online exclusive of Patty Gibbons artwork. Uh, it's 20 smaller pieces called Abstract Impressions. Uh, we've got the Exit 20 show that is coming up uh, next week. And then uh, Susanna Rahner in Quietude. This is a series of collages by uh, artist Susanna Rahner, who lives in Woodstock. Um, and she had recycled some of her artwork during COVID, some of her monographs to make a series of collages, one per day. Uh, and then finally, we've got Salt Hill, a Catskill Journey, Exploring a River Through Art. Uh, this, that was an, ex or that is an exhibit by um, Woodstock artist, Linda Linton, who spent a year traveling up the Salt Hill River, uh, documenting it uh, with a number of different, um, oils, uh, there's some uh, drawings, uh, really, really beautiful show. Uh, those are all available on Artsy, uh, so you can have a look at those. But today we are going to take an in-depth look at Best in Show. Uh, so when you click on Best in Show, there's a couple of ways that you can view the show. You can view each individual piece where you would click on each piece, or you can um, view it through the, um, the virtual room. Uh, so I'll give you a quick little preview of how uh, the virtual room looks. Um, no, oh. Here we go. Uh, so the virtual room is, is basically a user-friendly way of viewing the exhibit. We've got each piece of artwork um, followed by the artist statement all in one page. Um, unlike the other uh, where you need to click on each individual piece. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start off with um, the first piece. This is by Gertrude Abramson. Uh, this is called Waterfalling. It is a, um, hold on one sec, I'm sorry. Here we go. 
Water falling is a oil piece. It is mixed media, actually. It's 19 by 26. And Gertrude says, I love sitting and emerge myself into the flow of water. This piece was created after sitting by a waterfall and opening all my senses to this wonder. I tried to let it create itself and move with the flow I had felt. I felt that I succeeded in bringing on the paper, the power of these falls. Uh, a, uh, Gertrude lives in uh, Chichester, New York. And I'm probably saying that wrong. That's an odd little. Next, we have a piece by Mark Allen. Uh, this is called Rainbow. Mark lives in Tivoli, New York. It's acrylic on canvas, 30 by 40. Uh, and this is what Mark has to say. Why look over the rainbow when we have so much to be grateful for under the rainbow? My work is a raw reflection of who I am and where I am, a composite of perception and perspective. Inspired by color and form, each piece represents a mood, memory, longing, or insight. Our next piece is by uh, uh, Debbie Our, um, Our Breitbart. I'm, am I saying that right? I'm probably butchering it, Debbie, I'm sorry. Uh, this is called Pele. Uh, Debbie lives here in Socrates, and Debbie's got two pieces that are gonna be in the Exit 20 show next week. Uh, this is called Pele. It's an acrylic on canvas, 18 by 18. And the painting is her take on the fire goddess Pele. Pele was banished from the Tahitian Islands after getting in hot water over both her fiery, fiery temperament and for, ducing, for seducing her, her sister, the water goddess's husband. Uh, fire goddess has a special place in the artist's heart. Uh, Laura Vello. Laura has a number of pieces um, in previous shows. Uh, this is called Julie's Kayak. It is a solar plate. Uh, Laura's in Catskill, New York. The piece is a small piece, it's six by five. The series was inspired by her good friend who lives in New Hampshire and loves to kayak. She sent a photo one day and the composition was just wonderful. Creating a solar plate from the black and white drawing she did on the iPad was the starting point. From there, several prints were made each with different inking techniques and color themes. This one was produced with the extra ink left on the plate from the first print and then a second pass of transparent ink to knock down the white of the paper and mute the color. The texture of the second pass on the press adds something to the mood. This is a really lovely piece. Uh, this is called A Tuning. It's by Gulner Babayeva. It's ceramic and it looks like a bronze piece. Um, uh, Golnar, it lives in the Hudson Valley. This is a tuning. It's a smaller piece. It's 15 by eight and a half. It's part of the revival series. She brings these pieces back to life from the realm of the forsaken, in a sense, healing them in the process, which builds up her sense of self-reliance and self-healing potential. This sculpture carries a myriad of unspoken truths. View, the viewer is encouraged to attune themselves to her presence, to experience the story she holds. I believe due to multitudes of backgrounds, different stories revealed or nothing at all. Let me give you a few other takes on a couple other images as well from this. Hmm. Yeah, some detailed work. Okay, uh, our next artist is uh, Jay Balceros. Bal Balesteros. Uh, Jay is a new artist here in Socrates. Um, this is called December Walk at the Ashokan Trail Rail. It's photography and it's eight by 10. The long shutter exposure taken on a December afternoon walk at the Ashokan Reservoir in Boyceville, New York. Uh, Mr. Balacero's work focuses on portrait photography, landscape photography, and creating digital mixed media artwork. Using his skills as a photographer and designer, Jay is looking to explore and tell the stories within all of us. Next is Agnes. Agnes, here you are. I'm really pleased you're here. Uh, you're on mute, Agnes, so you need to unmute yourself. No, you're still on. I'm 
unfortunately, I can't do it from my end. I'm unmuted now. <laughs> I think you can hear oh. me now. Oh, you're you're on. You're good. Okay. A lot of people like to you, mute though. me. I talk too much. <laughs> but you're not muted. But anyway, um, of course, you can see this is a bluebird. It's an 8x10 nice. acrylic on canvas. I'm sorry, um, I'm Agnes. very inspired by... I, uh, we can't. Uh, can can anyone else hear hear Agnes? No. Yes. Or is it just me? You can. Yes. Okay. Can great. Hear can hear her. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. I have my volume <laughs> down. Unfortunately, I can't. Oh. <laughs> go. That's go ahead. Okay. No, this is an eight by ten acrylic on canvas. Um, it's one of my favorite. If you want to say best in show, I love bluebirds, and they're around us a lot. And whenever I get a chance, I go out and take their pictures. And uh, nature just inspires me. All the animals, the beautiful sunsets, stuff like that. So uh, generally, I I freehand sketch it in first, and then I do a light painting on it just to get it in. And then I keep layering, painting on it, so it comes out more and more and more. And um, I just, uh, I have another bluebird actually on Artsy, so you could see that on there too, but uh, they're such, so it's beautiful creatures and art is very relaxing for me, especially with the pandemic. I just enjoy it so much. So um, that's it on that one. So I'm finished, I'm gonna mute, okay? Robert, is, he's muted. Thank you. I'm glad you were here to join us. Thank you, Agnes. I just need to, here we go. Okay, that's what I need to do. I think I was unmuted. I'm so sorry about that, folks. Okay, uh, let's get back to this. Uh, so thank you, Agnes. And our next, um, this is a piece from Lowell Barr. Uh, Lowell, Lowell is an artist here in um, Saugerties, New York. Uh, and this piece is already sold. It's a, it's a little, it's a small little piece um, and it is called uh, Boiled Eggs. Uh, however, we do have uh, another piece uh, that is a, a couple of smaller pieces that are available by, Lois, this, uh, by, by Lowell. This one is called uh, Garlic Hearts. Okay, next we have um, Harriet Beecher Foreman. Uh, Harriet, I know you're here, right? Yeah, I'm Harriet Foreman Barrett. <laughs> Can you hear me? Let's see. I'm here. Harry, I, let me see if I can find you here. Can you wave for me? No? I'm waving. If she speaks, she'll appear. I'm speaking. Oh, I see you. Yep, yep. Here we go. <laughs> okay, great. Hi, Harriet. Welcome. Hi. Good to see you. Yeah, it's Harriet Foreman Barrett. <laughs> you, you made me into a beecher. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm yeah, I'm not seeing the picture though. Oh, there I'm it. sorry. Yep, okay. yep. Okay. Let me share this again. Oh. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Thank Got you. It? All right. Great. Okay. And you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. So first, thank you, Robert, for having me. I always love being a part of your whole journey here. Um, the reason I picked this oil on canvas. Um, was dual reasons. Um, it's a power of woman, um, however fleeting it can be. Uh, the yellow is part of, at the bottom is both part of nature and the wind and that wind is fleeting. It's very ethereal, but powerful. Um, but also the yellow is part of the energy of uh, rising from the ashes as well, over and over, as with the witches or any of the uh, discrimination discrimination of women. Um, the, I love what I worked through with the color just fleetingly going through her body um, as part of energy. So um, that's why I selected this one. And I, again, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Harriet. It's it's always always a pleasure to have your work here. Um, there's a, there's a, I've had Harriet's work a few times in mm -hmm. a handful of shows. So um, there's actually a really gorgeous sculpture of hers too called Strut that uh, was just in the last show. Um, and this actually sort of has a little bit of element, the elements to mm -hmm. that uh, as well. I think Thank always you. my work does that. It's always about woman's power or the power of being um, yeah. and that we will always overcome and rise and to remember the power within and yeah. honor ourselves. Absolutely. Thank you, Harriet. Thank you. All right, next we have um, Nanette Beach, uh, Reynolds Beecher. And Nanette, I just saw you here. Here you are, great. I'm gonna bring you up uh, if you can unmute yourself. Um, and there's two images. This is the back uh, part of the, of, of the work. And then uh, let's bring the front. All right. Come on now. Okay. All right. All right. Nanette, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Great. Welcome. Again. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, hi to everyone. It's so nice to always do these virtual shows now, isn't it? Um, I have been was very busy in 2021 and 2020, um, and this was such a great concept for a show. I just had to throw in my throw in my hat, so to speak. This piece was um, made for another exhibition that was done in 2021 called Violent Devotion, and the prompt of that show, Violent Devotion, really struck a chord with me, and I really began to think about, you know, it, the the curator was asking us to think about what people do for love. And I got very wrapped up in the story of um, Versace, the designer's murder, which was done by a serial killer. And I got wrapped up in that serial killer's head a little bit by following the series on television and reading the, the novel that it was based on and whatnot. And I started my journey as I do with most of the stuff I create by looking for maps and whatnot and thinking about the design elements of Versace. And it was very important for me to, to depict um, a mask in the piece. So I started, I start my journey always by searching for the elements. And then when they kind of all come together, boom, something kind of comes together. So this is sort of like a 3D collage, so to speak, mixed media <laughs> um, thing. The center thing is the Versace um, emblem. He uses the Medusa in it. And I created a mask that people can literally peer through from the front and the back of it. Um, and all of the elements in it um, are about the Kunan and the killer of Versace's, he, there was a big manhunt for him and whatnot. And um, I tried to, you know, combine the two, get into his head a little bit. Um, about, you know, love gone wrong, <laughs> let's face it, um, you know, love for the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, and I don't know why, but it just captured me. And I guess being cooped up, I was just possessed by it. Um, and I just ran with it. And I had, a, I, I had a, a lot of fun doing it and have exhibited one other time this in, uh, I think it was November in another show in, in Jersey City and it got a lot of attention. So um, it was fun, it was fun to do. It's a fun piece. Um, I'd love to see it. Well, we can see it behind you, um, but I would think <laughs> that, right yeah, I would think that with, you know, uh, having it hung in the center of a room where you can, you know, and nicely walk around and see both sides, it must be really strange. Right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, fantastic. I, I watched that series myself too, and I got wrapped up in it. The, it the was Ryan fabulous. What's that? The Ryan Murphy uh, series you were talking about? The dramatic? I, I think so. It was the American Crime yeah. series. Yeah. 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 Really and fun. it was 
that was based on a book by the writer Maureen Orth, who had done an article for Vanity Fair. And mm. then she wrote a novel and then they took that novel and put the series out. And I actually contacted her when I did this piece. And I just said, you know, I just went to her website and I said, I just wanted you to know you inspired this piece. Wow. And she was very gracious and she's actually written me a few times. So it's, it's very, it's very nice. Wonderful. I'm going to tell her about this so she can look at it online now. Excellent. Uh, okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Uh, always a pleasure. I uh, hope okay. to see you again thanks, soon sir. over in Jersey. Okay. Never okay. Care. Thanks. Take care. All right. Um, next, we have uh, Ken Beckles. Ken is, is, are you here, Ken? I don't think so. Uh, Ken lives in uh, New York City. Uh, this is a acrylic on plexiglass. It's called Evil Eye. It's 24 by 26. Ken's an abstract, abstract painter and an accomplished photographer. His paintings are personal and very different from other artists due to the way that he approaches the work. He mixes most of the colors that he uses and also designs the shapes that he, that he uses for the paintings. He tries to use as many variations that he can to separate the work from uh, the rest of what's out there. Uh, his photography is also personal in nature and with the color being an important issue for both. Uh, so that is Ken Beckles. And next we have uh, Natalie Baburka. Natalie, I know you're here. Let's see. There we go. Uh, I saw you. Muted. Okay, here you are. Great. Welcome we back. Go. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Everybody's staying warm. <laughs> it's pretty Trying cold. Too. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, during COVID and through the last couple of years, I have found my and seeing what I do through artwork. Um, two different series are kind of coming forward. This one, it's called the Silver Lining series. Um, what I like about this piece, I'll hold it up in a minute, is it's like you get five paintings in one because I'm metallics. And the whole point is that, you know, you walk by them and sometimes they just get out of your eye because they're glowing because the sunlight's hitting them or a different light source is and they really shift and change. Um, this is actually the piece and you can kind of put those light and dark even in there. So I needed something that kind of out of the gloom and doom of everything that was going on around us. And this was definitely that, that you know, when you, you look and you all of a sudden see the sun setting, you go, oh, wow. You know, it, it's just, and it just Okay, I don't know what happened. I got muted. I unmuted. Is that okay? You're okay. Um, <laughs> everybody else is unmuted. Um, so this is something that helped me feel lighter and better. And as I worked more and more, I started adding materials in. This actually has some mica powder, um, gold leaf, elongated leaf, extended and extended the materials I was using for it. Um, it all starts still hibiscus and I, I make that distillation and, and play with that first and it gives you that softness behind everything. Um, it's, it's really beautiful and predictable. You don't know whether it's gonna be pink or blue or what it's gonna look like when it actually drops. So it, it definitely pushes you to be exploring with these, not have a fixed idea by any means because you don't know what's gonna happen as you work through. And I think that's the beauty of it. I needed some came out well, not the, you know, what's gonna happen next out in the world that makes you feel bad. So it's nice to have some control of feeling light. Thank you. You, break the, I, you broke up at the last, the last second. Um, thank you, Natalie. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I would love to see it in person. Now you're muted again. I can bring it by. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Right. Take care. Okay. Uh, the next piece is by Leslie Bodzi. Uh, this is called Rashid. Uh, it, it, it has been sold. 
Um, Leslie is an artist that splits her time between uh, Houston and New York City. She's a sculptor and painter whose work focuses on the intricate relationships between materiality, trauma, and memory. She uses the material of pure paint mixed with tar gel to make drapes, surreal sculptures that reflect both the absence and presence of the self. Um, Leslie, I did a show for Leslie uh, at the gallery last summer, some really gorgeous uh, drape gold pieces. Um, so uh, have a look at that. That is on uh, Artsy as well. Uh, Vian Borchet, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yes, I'm here. Can you're you hear here. Me? Great. Uh, can you wave for me? I'm waving. Uh, gotcha. See you. Okay, great. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me and congratulations to everybody. The show looks wonderful, Robert. Thank you. Uh, beautiful work, so beautiful work everyone. Um, it really so, is a guessing show. <laughs> yeah, really, really beautiful. Each piece is very unique and, and very interesting. Um, so this, this piece is called Ghost Town. And um, I did this on March of 2021. Actually, I did a series of uh, paintings, all monochromatic, grayscale. And this is one of the last few remaining ones. Uh, and they're all inspired by the New York City skyline, um, a city I love very much. Uh, but also uh, what I wanted with the piece is to kind of capture the spirit, more or less, uh, the spirit of New York, rather than a, do a lit like a very literal um, uh, depiction of the city. So more capturing the city and also more of a kind of a dreamy take. But also when I did the artwork, um, around that time, still the beginning, the onset of the, of, of the whole COVID thing. Um, I do think that the piece is very reflective of that time where I kind of wanted to do work that doesn't have color. <laughs> so um, that is um, rather bare when it comes to, uh, and as I worked with the, with the art, with the whole series, which is called Monochromatic Dreams, um, I noticed that um, the lack of color or the absence of color is actually very beautiful. Um, so there's beauty in the bareness of, uh, and also in the grayscale. Um, so I really liked um, kind of like the, the feelings and what it got me to um, uh, through the artwork. Um, also in the work uh, I, I represent, I'm an abstract artist, but I also um, do more suggestive work of, let's say, cityscapes or landscape, which allows room for the imagination. Uh, so there's a lot of also symbolism within the piece. Um, one can feel almost there's a wind or a haze or a fog coming through the city uh, or coming through the city and coming around. And in a way, it is a depiction of how when COVID hit, everybody stayed at home, the streets were empty. You can almost hear the wind howling through the alleys and through the corridors and through um, and through basically the, the buildings. Um, but also in a way, a certain haze uh, and a certain dense fog kind of came uh, to the city, which is symbolic of, again, it was all reflective. I think it's my subconscious trying to do a lot of things with this work, uh, reflective of the uncertain times. Like what is the future? It's not really clear. Um, how is the road ahead? It's rather hazy or foggy, um, but kind of, um, so I do think that the painting is very reflective of how I felt, but also how things were and, you know, are kind of uh, with, uh, with the whole pandemic. So, I, think, I think you really captured what the, the emotions that many of us are feeling um, through the last couple of years in, in this piece yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah. The whole series is, is really beautiful. Um, or, or the, 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 you know, the pieces that I've seen from it. Um, Thank you. Is this something that you're going to continue on with? Yes. <laughs> right. I really enjoy, I mean, I, I have to say, it's, it's, there's a certain joy with the minimal aspect, at least for me. I really yeah. love the fact that I'm, and I do think it's all because it could be the fear of uncertainty. Sure. Like limiting myself to uh, minimal things. Um, maybe being confined, saying, okay, I'm just gonna see it through just one color and see what happens and the play black and white. Um, yeah. so I, I really think, but I think it helped also, it helped a lot. It was therapeutic as well. Okay? Yeah. Again, it is uh, you know, monochromatic, but for me, I started seeing the beauty of the chrome 
through the work. Yeah, I'm really pleased to have it. Oh, um, thank you so much. I'll definitely keep an eye on, on the rest of them and, and uh, look for, for some more. Thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, and um, there is a couple other pieces um, as well on Artsy of, of the ends if you wanted to have a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, we have uh, Eric Burns. Um, Eric is an artist in Brooklyn. Uh, this is called Golden Black Moon. Uh, this is the first one. It's, it's birch and gold leaf. Um, and it's sort of an interactive piece. Each of the individual strands um, can be taken off and turned around uh, to create a different, um, a different piece of art every single time. It's, he considers it, it's, it's a calendar and it's sort of an exploration on time. Uh, so this is what um, Eric has to say about the piece. It's an ongoing exploration into the representation of structuring of the passage of time. His background as a composer and performer has contributed to a sense that art can be founded in the shape and flow of experience from moment to moment, whether in the oral or the visual world. Uh, the calendar is not only a ubiquitous functional item, but also a portal into a very personal space. Plans past and future, the very material of our lives are laid out and organized here. Though the calendar's form, or through the calendar's form, he manipulates and uh, comments upon our relationship with time. The results are interactively evolving works that initiate introspection, uh, reflect the changing world around us and appeal to our aesthetics. Uh, Eric believes that art comes to life in the engagement between the artist and the piece as well as the piece and the viewer. So he put great care into the design and the craft of the calendars made specifically for people, places, situations, and periods of time. Each is unique and handcrafted. Conversely, many require daily or periodic adjustments by the owner. As I was saying, it, it flips right around. Um, the whole series of the calendars is really wonderful. I had um, exhibited one a couple months back um, that um, found a new home. Um, and if you have a chance, have a, have a look at some of the other um, calendars as well. They're, they're really, really stunning. Uh, next, we have a piece by Nancy Campbell. Nancy is an artist in uh, Saugerties, and this is um, Oil on Yupo. It is, called, um, it is called The Ice Box. Uh, it's 13 by 11. Uh, Green County, New York is home to many waterfalls and streams, hidden gems on woodland paths. Possibly her favorite is the Icebox Falls in Round Top, New York. The trail on private property leads down to the falls where the temperature is always a bit cooler than the surrounding higher ground, thus the, the term Icebox. Uh, Nancy will have, there I'll have a couple, uh, couple pieces of Nancy's in uh, the new show as well. Uh, Nancy Cantandella, another Nancy. Uh, Nancy lives in uh, Kingston. This is called Tender is, I'm um, behind schedule, yes. This is called Tender is the Fabric That Is Us. It's charcoal and encaustic, 36 by 36. The artwork is a portrait of a friend's grandmother that she began working on before the pandemic. She was in a dilemma about this and of painting the portrait because our normal life was now a new normal. The new normal is wearing a face mask and limiting activities because of lockdowns. Hence, the finished painting became a child with a mask on and seen sitting still on a couch, caught in a pause from playing fetch with a dog. Her approach to making art is mostly grounded in the process. She begins with an idea and allows it to develop in a way so that she can stay open to multiple directions the artwork may lead her. She uses encaustic paint with other media because of its fluidity, which may add to the expressive content of her work. So that is Nancy Cantandella. Uh, next we have Larry Cap Cavney. Uh, Larry, are you here? Larry, are you here? I thought you were joining us, maybe not. Okay. Great. Uh, Larry is an artist in uh, Tubac, Arizona. Uh, this is called Octopus. It's acrylic on canvas. It's 30 by 25. And Larry says, I love octopus. 
Um, I think this is this is a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool piece. I, I saw Larry's work on um, uh, Instagram at first and reached out to him. I, I like his work a lot, um, and I like this piece a lot. Uh, Ross Corsair. Uh, Ross is a uh, artist and a photographer in Garrison, New York. This is called Home Sweet Home. And I could use a little bit of that right now. Uh, next is work by Shelley Davis. This is called Cocos Cola Sign, Carrollton, uh, Georgia. This is acrylic on canvas. It's 11 by 14. Uh, living in isolation away from friends and social events can break people, but as an artist, I have used the time to deeply reflect on my life and then create what I have found. This journey back in time includes watching old cowboy movies, going through childhood photographs, and searching for images from the past that speak to, to me artistically. When I look at an image of an old movie marquee or abandoned diner, it excites me, makes me want to paint it to make it my own. I love old, wo old wood, rust, texture, and weathered paint. The current series she is painting now assures her that things don't die, they merely change form. Okay, that's Shelly Davis. Uh, Nancy, are you here? Nancy DeFlong? I think I saw you. Here you are. Hi, Nancy. Yeah, hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for doing this show for us again. Absolutely. Uh, good to see you. So um, this is a beautiful piece. Thank you. Um, tell us about it, a little, very different from what I know of your work. Yeah, well, it, it is. Thank you for, for, uh, for making that comment. Um, it happens to be from a place from which uh, I've, I've taken hundreds and hundreds of pictures before. It's called Paradise Valley in Rhode Island. So it's now under about two feet of snow. But I took this last March. And what makes it different from my other pieces is that normally I'm taking pictures of this facing the sea or I'm facing in the opposite direction, facing east toward the wildlife refuge, Satcha West Point. But in this one, uh, another thing that makes this different is that I'm normally there at sunrise. This is closer to sunset. And um, so I, I was facing west, that's where the light was going and facing just west, actually toward Newport and toward that iconic building there, which is um, St. George's School. And I was trying to get a picture originally without people in it, but people kept coming. And I thought, wait a minute, these people are all going away from me. And that, I, I, just, I just thought, well, they, they not only lent scale, but there's something ghostly about it. And interestingly, when something about the light there, but whether I'm down on the sand or whether I'm up on the rocks that are over there to get some height, I see people down there and it's very easy to get a kind of a ghostly look with these people. You know, they, they just, they never turn out looking very, uh, you know, like detailed that you can see their faces or they're, they're, they're just kind of human shapes. It makes it an interesting place to photograph uh, for that. And then, um, you know, I just you know, played around with the light a little bit, bumped up a couple of things in, in here and there. And um, uh, Turner is somebody I can get obsessed with at times. And you think of him as being one of these people with very bright bursts of color. In actual fact, he has a lot of dark kind of paintings. And um, well, if I may say so, this kind of, well, it was, it was his spirit was, was haunting me at the time I, when I processed this picture. Uh, Nancy, what's the texture on there? Was that done digitally? Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Great. Really beautiful. Uh, it's 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 got a real haunting quality to it. That's why I was I was mm -hmm. like I said I was surprised that it it came from you. Uh, thank you, uh, Nan There's a number of works of Nancy's that are on um, artsy, all mostly old, pretty much old landscape. Beautiful work. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. A lot of Hudson Valley. A lot of very local work uh, or local settings. Um, okay, this is a piece by uh, Charles Dorr, Chuck Dorr. Uh, Charles lives in Brooklyn. This is called Outer Turmoil. It's watercolor and pencil on paper. It's 17 by 17, that's framed. What a world, feeling overwhelmed at times, protecting the best and the worst, or projecting the best and the worst, the agitation and the calmness. Pencil and watercolor just works for me. I can begin a piece and let the medium take over. I know where to start, follow my flow, and know where to finish. I see as much work as possible and am influenced by my observations of the everyday. Charles Dorr, 
uh, Stacy Flint. Stacy is an artist um, over in New Paltz. This is called Misty Dusk. It's acrylic on canvas, 18 by 24. Uh, when walking on a trail of a former farm road at the base of the Shawnagunks, is that right? Uh, near my home, I was inspired. It was dusk, a misty cold yes. home in the valley, leaving the view of farm buildings, trees, fields, and a ridge selectively obscured and revealed. I love the way the fading light played yeah. in the scene. I took a photo and used it as a reference for my vibrant, colorful, and intuitive painted interpretation. Uh, so this is Stacy Flint. Uh, next, we have a beautiful abstract piece by Raiden Fress. Uh, Raiden is an artist over in uh, Kingston. Uh, this is called Illusion. It's an acrylic piece. It's 20 by 20. Uh, to me, painting means creating a happening, often surprising myself with the unexpected. Abstract painting is a visual language for me, forms, shapes, textures, and colors that can be interpreted in amazing ways. I paint an experiment and am fully involved with the revelations of the search. In many of my paintings, I find my inspiration in nature. These paintings have all been completed this year with its challenges or this, this painting was created this year. Um, okay, next we have Shannon Gardner. Uh, Shannon, are you here? Let's see. Shannon, no? Uh, do I see you? No. No, no. Okay. Uh, this is called Optometrists. Uh, Shannon actually lives in Wisconsin. Uh, this watercolor and ink on paper, it's 13 by 13. Um, Shannon appreciates the spontaneous process of nature and strives to explore Earth's unfound beauty and imitate its natural imperfections. She creates art depicting paranormal elements and iconography. Her line and dot work creates an impression of a technical drawing. Stippling and cross-hatching creates clusters of value implying crisp texture and depth, giving the illusion of change through time. Shannon's serendipitous approach to watercolor and ink creates a profound contrasting aura with her illustrations. Uh, I've got a few pieces of Shannon's that have been in previous shows. One of them is a really wonderful piece of um, Danny DeVito that I liked a lot. <laughs> uh, so that's Shannon Gordon. Uh, next we have Andrea Geller. Andrea, you're here, I saw you. I am here, Robert. Yeah, I love this piece, Andrea. Thank you so uh, much. Next time, I'm, did, I haven't seen this in person yet, did I? No. I don't think so. Next time I'm, next time I'm there, I wanna see it in person, so pull it out. Okay, <laughs> if I'm it's still there. It right now. <laughs> yes, it's here. Yeah. Um, so this piece is, was inspired from a trip we took to Iceland. And I'll just gonna read you a quick statement. During my recent travels on the Ring Road in Iceland, we stopped at this site and I knew this image would be etched in my memory. The basalt rock was standing alone amidst the powerful waves of the water. Um, and that best describes my experience of even painting this because um, I have been painting water for some time, but what I've learned is the coastline has its own kind of struggles. <laughs> so I spent the whole summer trying to understand these waves and these <laughs> waves that I experienced were really quite powerful. So um, I also followed that up with another uh, painting, uh, more horizontal, but also uh, that discusses the power of the water in Iceland. Andrea has a real way with water. Um, uh, she's, she's um, uh, I have, there's a couple series on Artsy on the gallery page. One of them is the bathing series and they're um, are smaller pieces. Like are they 12 by 12, is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah, 12 by 12 uh, works on panel depicting the whole process of um, getting ready for the bath in the bath and preparing after the bath. And she's got another whole series of um, uh, swimmers. Uh, there's a pool series. Um, actually, I just, I just sent one of Andrea's pool pieces to Germany. So they are thinking of summer over in Germany. <laughs> um, but yeah, have a, have a look at Andrea's pieces. She's uh, on RT. She's got a really, really wonderful way with, um, with water. Thank you so much, Robert. What a great Absolutely. show. Thank you. And are you, is the show still up at, at, at uh, the Bergen? In it Bergen? is still, it's supposedly supposed to be 
coming down, but I haven't heard anything. So it's at Bergen Community College, the nine um, 32 by 32 pool paintings. Yeah, it's really beautiful. If you're in the area and get a chance, go check it out. They're uh, really nice, really great to see in person and really nicely hung again. All right, Appreciate thanks, it. Andrea. Good to see you. Same here. Okay, uh, Denise Giardulo. Uh, Denise is an artist in Stone Ridge. This is called Bank Shots. It's an assemblage of found objects. Uh, 19 by 13, an old discarded metal game board inspired this piece. Uh, next, we have Marianne Glass. Uh, Marianne is a photographer over in Wappingers Falls. This is called Making Tracks. It's 12 by 12. Uh, she had stopped overnight uh, at a road, uh, in Maumee, Ohio during a road trip to Wisconsin. In the middle of the town is a huge granary. The fields for miles and miles are planted with corn and soybean, and the railroad there transports the products across the U.S. I'm from an agricultural family in Ohio, so this kind of ag industry, industrial business speaks to me. This is almost a perfect composition, if I do say so myself. I would say it's a perfect composition. <laughs> uh, so that's Mary Ann Glass. And when I say I, I don't mean me, I mean the, the, the artists. I figured you'd guess that. Uh, this is Maddie Goldman. Uh, this is an assemblage piece. Uh, Maddie is, uh, lives over in Voice, Voiceville, New York. Uh, this is called Mick J in parentheses with hat. This is just one piece from my series called The Family, Heart, Body, and Soul. My father was a saver, so it is no accident that I am drawn to recycled materials. Searching for and finding these discarded objects at flea markets, junkyards, and garage sales is an integral part of my process. The challenge is to combine disparate found pieces along with my handcrafted elements to give them a new life and personality as a member of the family. I work spontaneously and intuitively constantly reassessing the progress of each piece. Uh, so this is Maddie Goldman, um, and there are a handful of, of Maddie's pieces as well on OC. Uh, next, we have Diana Garanga. Uh, Diana, you're here, no? No? Uh, Diana is an artist over in High Falls. This is called Open Blossom. It's pastel on paper, 24 by 18. Um, and also, open Blossom needing to create new life, a renewed life needing to present itself from a most turbulent year. Uh, the life of a line is my muse. Guided by my muse, I search for a perspective of divine existence in our broken milieu where light is present. Through its lightness and heaviness to its finite and eternal presence, I sculpt the line. Okay, um, next we are... Let's move to the next page. Okay, Teresa Gooby. Let's share this page with you. Okay, the next artist is Teresa Gooby. This is called Tanya. Uh, Teresa lives in Beacon. This is ink and colored pencil on paper. It's 14 by 17. It's a monoprint that has been hand colored. It is inspired by one of her earliest memories, seeing Patty Hearst captured and arrested on television. That's pretty cool. Uh, Christine Graff, Christine, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi. You are. I thought I saw you. It's so uh, great. Oh, to I see you. you. Yeah, yeah, hold on. I did see you. Yeah, can you hear me? I can, yes. Here we are, let me pin you. Great, great. Welcome, yeah. this is gorgeous, this piece. Thank you, thank you. Um, really, really first of all, nice. I just want to say I'm, I'm really pleased to be here. A little nervous, but happy to be here. Oh, and, please don't be. It's so <laughs> informal. <laughs> and also just to have participated in, in a few of your other shows. Um, this is called Totem for New Growth. And because of what we've all been experiencing through the pandemic, the uncertainty and all the upheaval of many things, and we, I don't have to go into that. Uh, totems represent for me the aspirational. And I felt like I needed to create something to aspire to that made me feel good. And um, I created a number of different totems this year. 
Um, this particular piece is a combination of very simple elements. It's just unprimed canvas and tea with lots of process, a lot of cutting, a lot of creating the shapes, a lot of gluing. But there was something wonderful about in the process because you don't, you know, as other fellow artists, you know this, you just never know how it's gonna turn out. But I feel I, one of the things that this reminds me of just is like, it is literally looking like new growth. It is pulling itself up to the light. And I think maybe that's what I'm trying to do in my life. Uh, I've made other totems, a totem for peace, a totem for kindness, the things that we all want in our life right now. And so that's what this is. This is about like planting new growth. What are we going to create next? What's the next point in this particular time period that we're living in? Let's aspire to what we can, you know, what we can do that's the best for us. Um, and anyway. It's really beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank I was you. I trying, to, hope trying to bring up a little, a little closer, so you can sort of see the details. Yeah, Stunning. I have a whole series like this of where I yeah. use the raw canvas and the cutting. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like it. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, Gwyneth Green. Uh, Gwyneth is an artist in Little Silver, New Jersey. Uh, Gwyneth is mostly, I know Gwyneth is a poet and I've known her for a number of years um, with her poetry. She's done some of the poetry projects uh, with the gallery. Um, so this is called Focus on Clarity. It's photography eight by 12. Uh, the initial photos are taken with no particular intention. Um, in review on the computer, she disassembled them and restructured the image using a variety of techniques. While working to create a, a captivating mood, she found poetic inspiration in the form of haikus, which are six, six word poems of short poetic flows. Uh, those words are subtle, subtly mended, uh, melded into the photo, creating um, her own photo musings. For some reason it's not, oh, here we go. Let's find some of them. Focus on clarity, it's the title. Uh, so this is Gwyneth Green. Uh, I encourage you to please check out her, her, her poetry. She, Gwyneth is a, a really fantastic poet, very prolific. Um, you can find some of her poetry and some more of her work on uh, not the artsy site, but the Emerge Gallery uh, ny.com site where uh, Gwyneth has participated in some of the um, poetry uh, events uh, in the past and some of her poetry is published there as well. Uh, so that's Gwyneth Green. Uh, next, we have uh, Betty Greenwald. Uh, Betty is an artist in uh, Kingston. Uh, this is an abstract piece called Is There a Why? It's acrylic and ink on canvas. It's 36 by 48. Uh, my work is an ever-changing exploration of my internal turmoil. My work asks questions. I want the viewer to visually search the canvas and at the same time ask themselves questions. Inner and out searches colors and forms and lines exploring the subconscious. Uh, Helen, Helen Guttenfraud. Um, at, Helen, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Guten, is it good friend? Guttenfraud? Good friend. Good friend, yes. Yes. Good friend. yes, very nice. Um, did you want to say something about this, Helen? Or are you, I'm, I, I know you said you didn't want to, but I, I mean, I'd be happy to read it. It's oil. Um, it's uh, oil on archival paper. And it's yeah, it's, it's a combination of uh, oil bar, like pigment stick and, oh, yes, and oil, oil pastel on arches, oil paper, and it's uh, 30 by 22 or 22 yeah. by 30, depending upon which way you measure. And um, yeah, you can, you can go ahead and yeah. read the rest of it. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, as I said, it's called Ludwig the Rooster. Maybe I didn't say that, but Lud Ludwig, Ludwig may look beautiful with all his colorful plumage, but don't let that fool you. This rooster isn't afraid to let you know who's boss. Ahem, it's him. Oil bar drawings are a return to my roots. And as an abstract painter, I am excited to work with the medium now on more figurative projects. My drawing process is both addictive and subtract, or it, it, yes, addictive and subtractive, making direct marks 
and then choosing what and what not to include in the final piece. This is a really fun piece. I like it a lot. Thanks, Helen. Thank you. Uh, there's a really wonderful piece of Helen's too from the last show. Um, if you're a Grateful Dead fan, you will enjoy that piece. Uh, next, we have Tom Hackett. Tom, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a bit. I like this piece a lot. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm really, um, really glad and honored to be here. Uh, this, this came out of some experimentation. I was inspired by a black and white por portfolio of that uh, was um, published in a magazine called Lenswork. Uh, and it was uh, very close up photographs of ice cubes in the process of melting. So I wanted to uh, create something based on that and um, add a little color, uh, which I did. But in the process, I had some other ideas. And this one turned out to be a lot of fun. Uh, choosing the right uh, shutter speed and um, and when to uh, when to toss or drop the ice cube in, into the uh, into the setting. Um, in all honesty, this is a composite of four or five photographs. There's no way I was going to throw four ice cubes and have them all land at the same time and still be able to record the flash, the splash. It was, it was still old school, though. I mean, you did it, you know, the old school way. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's nothing really unique or new about the technique, but it was just a lot of fun to do it. And well, but people, this, people don't take the time to do that anymore since they can just do it on the computer. Uh, so it's always nice to see when um, people actually do take the time uh, to, to do it, you know, old school. Well, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Thank you, Tom. Good to see you. Um, next we have, uh, Mavis, Mavis, Mavis Harris. Mavis, are you here? I think you are. No? Okay. Okay. Uh, so Mavis Harris is from Accord. This is called the Enlightened Carrot. It's mixed media. It's 20 by 14. Uh, some of her work arrives fully drawn and forms uh, with life with a life of its own. The enlightened carrot was one of these, his long leg roots morphing into the infinity sign, cocooning him into eternity. Uh, his entire being flowing with enlightened heart. Are you there? No? Okay. Uh, the depth and richness of the colors are reminiscent of Maxwell Parrish, creating an otherworldly feel to the piece, which is balanced by the well-grounded nature of the carrot. This piece is dedicated to all the gardeners of the world to understand that humor and beauty uh, are keystones of enlightenment. Be kind and be curious. So this is Mavis Harris. And then we have uh, Sue Harris. I don't think it's a relation. Uh, this is um, uh, Sarah Harris, I'm sorry. This is uh, Oil on Canvas. Sarah, were you able to make it on? No. Uh, Sarah, Sarah's from Accord as well. So maybe they are, maybe they are related. You'll have to, you'll have to let me know. Uh, this is called Flying High. It's oil on canvas, 30 by four. Uh, recently, she realized she has been using the image of ladders in various paintings. Um, I've been seeing that on Instagram, uh, uh, Sarah. I noticed that myself. This year, she focuses on three paintings where ladders were the primary symbolic image. Uh, this painting suggests ladders reaching for the sky, the freedom to fly. Uh, so that is Har Sarah Harris. Uh, Christine, are you here? Christine Henninger. Yes, I'm here. You are. Okay, great. Yes. I, I saw you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's find you. Uh, can you wave for me? Oh, okay. <laughs> you see me? That's the easiest way to, for me to see people. Oh, no. I see. You. Uh, I see you. Yep. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. All the way from Vermont. All the way from Vermont, yes. Nice. Um, so I'm so glad that you did, you wanted our favorites because I took you literally and um, I chose this, it's one of my favorites for a couple of reasons. 
Um, you know, in Vermont, we have long, cold winters. Mm -hmm. And this is a photo that I took and I looked it up. It was last, the beginning of March. And for the moon to be that high and see the sun was setting. So it really brings back this whole excitement of like spring is coming. It's going to come. It actually, you know, will come. And then after I fooled around with it, it came out like a sort of a, um, a Japanese print sort of feel to it which I just thought was like, great. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's about it's, it. It's a really beautiful, that blue is just stunning. The blue and the, and then the orange too, I think blue, blue and orange are, yeah. you know, such a wonderful combination. It is. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I was pretty happy with it. So I was glad that you liked it too. <laughs> I did, yes, very much. Uh, I found it interesting that, that I'm asking, I, I was asking the artists to choose their best, but for some artists, it was a little difficult because I did receive, I was expecting to just receive one submission from a lot of artists, but. Mm -hmm. Well, since you had four, I did, I expected there only to be one. And since you had four, I went along with it, but. I was glad you chose this one because I out of them, this was the one that I really liked the best. So yeah. I think next time, <laughs> next time I do it, I will just let just once one submission. Oh, yeah. You, Christine, stay warm up there. Yes. Yeah. We're trying. Thank yeah. you, Robert. You got it. All right. Next we have uh, Allie Herman. Uh, Ali, um, I've had a number of pieces from um, Ali's in the past before. Sold, uh, actually, she had two pieces in the small show that both um, went home uh, with someone. Uh, Ali's from Troy, New York. This is called A Pattern of Felt Emotion. It's paper collage on canvas and it's 20 by 24. Uh, this collage is on canvas. It's created with pen and ink, acrylic medium, and acrylic paint wash, dress pattern papers repurposed tea bags and new and used coffee filters. Um, Allie uses a, a lot of her, uh, a lot of uh, recycled materials in her work. Uh, there is a handful of Allie's pieces as well on, um, on Artsy, if you wanted to have a, a look at, at some more of her work. Uh, next we have David Hull. Uh, David, I think David's here. He's not here. He's not here. Okay, Barbara, are you here? Yes. Okay, great. I'm here. All right. Uh, so David uh, lives in New Paltz. Uh, this is called Trees and Fields. It's an acrylic on paper, 18 by 24. And for the last few years, I have explored the expressive effects of the palette knife. Uh, this is a really beautiful landscape. Um, it's, Barbara, do you know where, um, where actually I the landscape is from? I'm pretty sure it's from uh, Mohunk Preserve from the walk that you oh. take the Spring Farm Trailhead. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that makes sense. Great. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, uh, Barbara, let's bring your piece up. Next, we have a piece by Barbara Holt. This is Rough Winter. It's oil on canvas, 12 by nine. Uh, mm -hmm. Barbara, did you want to say something about it? Oh yeah, I can always say something. Yes, I would like to. And thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I love how it looks. I'm glad to see it. Um, the rough winter refers to the kind of um, absence of color and how whatever color there is in the land kind of gets beat out by the elements. Um, this is from a photograph taken in early winter of a field and some trees, but it doesn't, we don't yet have the beauty of the snow in the winter. And it's kind of the um, washing out of all the color that begins. And that's part of the roughness is us learning to live without it. Um, and uh, I also very much like how the trees came, came out. They're kind of beaten up by the weather too. Yeah, I, I especially like the way the trees are. Yeah, thank do you. you use, do you do plein air or do you use photographs? I use kind of photographs. I have do. done plein air in the past, but um, I use photographs. I've participated in plein air events at um, uh, Mohonk Preserve. Mohonk, like yeah, that. Mohonk does a really nice uh, annual uh, plein air event. Yes. Really nice. yeah, this, yeah, this is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Next we have Jeff Helmuth. Uh, Jeff is an artist here in uh, Socrates. This is called West Camp. It's pen and ink on Mylar, uh, 13 and a quarter by 37 and a quarter. I've always been intrigued by industrial landscapes. The pen and ink lends itself to the corroded image, yet there is a beauty in the rusty scene. This work took two and a half months to complete, all drawn by hand. The frame is also made by the artist. Uh, so this is uh, Jeff, Jeff Helmuth. Uh, Linda, are you here, Linda Ippolito? Linda Ippolito, are you here? That's really nice. No? Okay, uh, Linda is an artist in Montclair that um, actually a friend of mine had introduced me to. We haven't met in person, but she introduced me to her work. Uh, this is called Departure. It's pigment oil stick encaustic uh, in paint and medium on cradled board. It's, uh, it's large, it's six by 24 by two. Uh, Hi, I'm, oh, I'm here. here. I'm oh, sorry. great. That's okay, okay. let's... Uh... Sorry. Oh, here you are. Okay, I didn't see you. Okay, great. Yeah, please tell us about this. Yeah, Linda. no, I'm thrilled to be part of the exhibition and to meet you. Uh, it was terrific that Sharon made the connection. Thank yeah. you. And uh, I wrote a little piece. Um, Nature is a central theme of my work. I'm drawn to the landscapes of dramatic light and color. The encaustic medium presents the ability to create layers giving luminous effect. Departure was inspired from an earlier painting. The painting originated from, the from a photo my daughter took of woods lit by moving light. It is a favorite of 2021, unable to travel for inspiration. I was pushed to look for what I have and to look within. Reflecting on works I knew well and recreated them. It taught me to push and explore new limits to my work that I was familiar with, giving it a new breath of life. It's really wonderful, uh, Linda. I mean, the, thank the, you. The colors are, you know, the combination of all of the colors is, I mean, it's it, it, it's really well put together. Um, this is now you do mostly abstract work, no? Um, it's, it's impressionism with abstract. Okay. Gotcha. Beautiful. Uh, one of these days, we'd love to meet you. Maybe we'll go out for lunch with, uh, grab Sharon and, and uh, grab a coffee or lunch that. or something. Okay, great. Very soon. Thank you so much. You got it. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Next we have, um, Nair Iqbal. Um, this is a beauty. This is Macy's on Broadway. I, I love this piece. Um, Naira, I just saw you. Where'd you go? Here you are. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Yes, I can hear you. Hello, Excellent. everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, I am also uh, thrilled and very excited to be the part of this show. And thank you so much for having me in this beautiful show. Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, I'm an uh, artist uh, living in uh, Long Island, New York. And uh, I love to paint in uh, oil and mixed media as well. And uh, um, I am the painter who works with bold strokes, colors, and mixed media sometimes. My passion for paintings revolves around streets, street scenes of, um, I love to paint the street scenes of New York City and the, the life of New York's uh, city around the streets it really attracts me and the old buildings of cities balanced with the daily life uh, around us i love to paint them and i feel proud to exhibit my work being able to communicate the beauty i see in the world through my paintings it's kind of a blessing to me and i build, uh, i i love to a paint in impressionism as well, the different landscapes. And uh, sometimes I used to paint, uh, I, I love to paint in plein air as well. I would love to do some kind of plein air event one of these days. Uh, this I like a lot because it's, it's such a familiar scene to me um, for, for, you know, decades. Um, so it is, it is a little, you know, a little bit of home. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. So so thank much. you. It, it's, it's really stunning. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you. 
Great to meet you too, Robert. Thank you so much. I'm You're looking welcome. forward to work with you guys. Yeah, please keep in touch. Uh, come visit thank when you're up so in the area. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a piece by uh, Lynn Isaacson. Um, Lynn's a wonderful potter over in the New Paltz area or the Gardner area. Um, I had the real honor of seeing um, seeing her at work and seeing her brand new kiln. Um, this is a, uh, it's a flask. Uh, it's stoneware clay. Really, really beautiful piece. Um, it is um, 10 by eight by three and a half. It's a wood fired flask. It was inspired by her dear friend. Uh, she fired a few of his in his Donna Gama, which is, um, I believe it's a, a, a certain um, um, stove. Uh, uh, she was curious about how he made them and she wanted to see if she could make one herself. So it's made from two straight sided bowls that were then attached along with a third thrown. Is piece. this bothering you? Um, she glazed and fired it in the fall at New Prospect Pottery, the pottery, and like many before it, this didn't survive the firing without a small crack on one side. Still functional, the crack adds character. Uh, so that's Lynn Isaacson. Uh, Jennifer Jackowitz. Uh, Jennifer, I just met for the first time yesterday. She brought in a couple pieces for the new show. Um, I don't think Jennifer's here. Um, actually, one of Jennifer's the pieces that's going in the Sogarty show um, sold already. So congratulations, Jennifer. Uh, this is called Clarion Callers. It's mixed media, markers, acrylic, and watercolor. It's 14 by 11. Uh, Cl Clarion Callers represents man's call to protest through music, to bring people together and promote each, uh, each to promote peace in each other. As I connect with the world around me and the deeper world inside my dreams, I am drawn to untangle those ideas into the vacant canvas. My thoughts have come into actuality, uh, wondrously real for the viewer to interpret and sense in their own deep world. That's Jennifer Jackowitz and Shelby Johnson. Shelby, I think you're here. Is that right? No? Okay. Uh, Shelby Johnson lives in Hopewell Junction, New York. Uh, this is called Hydrangeas. It's oil on canvas, 12 by 16. Uh, searching and recording through drawing and paintings, the fleeting impressions of the mind's crosswords. The natural world to, uh, uh, offerings a sense of purpose to remain loyal to the, interconnected, uh, the interconnections of multiple meanings that lay at the heart of existence. So this is by uh, Shelby Johnson. Uh, Deborah Joyce is an artist here in Saugerties. This is called uh, Dusk. It is oil on paper, 12 by 12. Uh, the next piece is by uh, Jeanette Cahill. Uh, Jeanette lives in West Shokan. This is a portrait called Cynthia. It's oil on canvas, 16 by 12. It began and as a uh, sketch in paint and on a toned canvas. The face is developed by establishing the darker values first, then the mid-tones, and finally modeling the lights. She used a complementary palette and allowed the various layers to dry before moving on to the final pass. Uh, working from live models is a challenge. No one wants to sit for the amount of time that you need. Learning how to manipulate a photo to make it stronger has helped make the painting process feel like painting from life. While it's important to me to obtain, uh, to attain, the likeness of a person capturing their essence or mood, mood is most satisfying. A uh, beautiful portrait, and I, I really like the nose ring here. I don't know if you can see it, but um, yeah. Beautiful, Jeanette. Uh, Patricia Kelly, really glad to have uh, one of Patricia's works uh, here. I haven't had uh, Pat Kelly's uh, work in a bit. It's good, to, it's good to see you, and I saw you a couple months ago. It was really nice to reconnect again. Uh, Patricia lives in Kingston. This is called Wellfleet Evening. It's pastel, 14 by 17. The atmosphere and light that constantly is changing by the water is always unique. Pastel seems the perfect medium to capture the many exciting transformations. Uh, so that's Pat Kelly. Uh, Kay Kenny. Kay is a uh, photographer here in um, Saugerty. She teaches at the International Center of Photography, I believe still, and over at NYU. She's also the founder of uh, Pro Arts in New Jersey, if you're a member of them. 
Uh, this is called yeah. Starburst. It's from a series called The Garden of Earthly Delight, Delights. It's an uh, archival inkjet photo montage and it's 20 by 24. Uh, K uses all long exposure. Uh, the long exposure night photo montage from images taken in my garden during a pandemic lockdown. Uh, she photographs herself with the camera set on the ground, no control or idea of what the camera would capture, a lot like what I was feeling at the time. So it's all, all natural light that Kay uses. Uh, next, we have a piece by um, uh, Pam Krimsky. Uh, Pam lives in Highland, New Jersey. Are you here, Pam? No? Okay. Uh, this is Self-Portrait with Rose. It's an acrylic on canvas. It's 15 by 23. Uh, next, we have Veronica Lawler. Uh, Veronica, I know Veronica's here, and I'm really pleased to have her. Um, there is going to be a uh, solo show of some of Veronica's small works coming up on Arts and Soon, and you will see some more of Veronica's work here at the gallery come uh, the next few months. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Robert. How are, you? How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. Um, Absolutely. And, I like the um, This is beautiful. Thanks so much. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you asking all of us to submit our favorite piece from 2021. Um, and it's it's really nice to see the range in this show. Um, this is uh, This is an abstract painting. It's part of a larger series that I've been working on. Um, and the, the reason that I, I really liked this one and wanted to submit it for the exhibit was I, I was kind of happy with the layering that showed up in this piece and uh, the movement of the piece. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in um, urban spaces and how they, they really retain the memories of everything that's happened within them. And I, I feel like in that movement and in that layering, you know, there's that idea of memory inherent and, um, and the story. So um, yeah, so this is, this is one of the series, as I said, and this whole idea um, really started and has been inspired by, um, there's a, a bridge called the Kosciuszko Bridge, connects Brooklyn and Queens in New York. And the old 1930s truss bridge was dismantled a few years ago, very unceremoniously. And you know, as I was drawing and, and documenting the deconstruction of it, I just, was thinking about all the hopes and all the ideals that were <laughs> attached to the bridge and how it came down just so quickly and it was tossed aside. And so I thought with the abstraction um, could be a way to sort of speak to all the life that was lived and has been lived in these spaces that are really being torn down in, in all around New York, these kind of old industrial areas. So that's this piece called Court Square. It's part of Queens, uh, Long Island City, uh, which is another very industrial area of New York that's disappearing. <laughs> the whole series is really wonderful. I saw I saw uh, many of them in person, um, and I'm really you'll you'll be seeing more of them soon. And I'm really pleased to um, have this, some others, and to have some of uh, Veronica's work coming up. Uh, great to see you, Veronica. Thank you as always. Same here. Thanks so much, Robert. Take we'll care. be in touch. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rich. Yes, can you hear me? Levy, yeah, uh, I hear you, let me find you. Uh, oh, I hear you, I see you. Welcome, Rich, how you been? Fine, how are you? I just saw you yesterday. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's a pleasure well, to be here and thank you very much for having me in your show. Um, this work pleasure. is, this is a, a charcoal drawing with pastel uh, added to it. It's from a two session uh, studio uh, modeling uh, at uh, Woodstock School of Art on Sunday morning, uh, morning drawing class with Les Castellanos. Uh, I have the uh, first uh, component of the session and uh, that was that was a three hour session. And then what you're seeing is the, is the final three hour session. Um, I'm really not an experienced artist. I'm in a category of people who later in life uh, either refine themselves or or find themselves being able to do art, and um, it's uh, really exciting uh, for me to to, to participate. Um, uh, I just wanted to say a few things. Uh, you know, I'm a physician, and in my readings, 
work has come out recently from Harvard about people in their 70s or 80s actually maps maximizing their brain capabilities, their right right sidedness and left sidedness, uh, the calculating and the artistic sides of their brains later in life. And I found that fascinating. Um, I was an artist much younger in my 20s, and I literally stopped for 40 years. And a couple of years back, just started drawing up here and drawing became pastel and some painting. And uh, I feel as if it's coming back to me and I, that I've actually uh, gone beyond what I used to do. And I hope that other people uh, can share this experience. I hope they're finding that, uh, that uh, thrill in their lives at this point in time. That's really interesting that there's, you know, doc, you know, uh, science to back that up because I, I see that I've been seeing that for, for years that a lot of, um, a lot of artists are rediscovering their passion again later in life after, um, you know, having a career, uh, raising a family, and then really, you know, finding time to do something for themselves. And for a lot of, a lot of artists, or a lot of people, it, it, it's, uh, it's art. Um, so I, I always welcome artists later in life who um, are either just starting out or reconnecting with their passion again. Um, so yeah, Rich, I mean, this is a perfect example of that. I, I'm really, really pleased to have it. It's a, and, you know, I've been keeping an eye on your work too, and you, you keep getting better. So I'm really pleased to, to have this. And the next one in the next show um, is really wonderful as well. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, keep it up. Keep going to Woodstock. I mean, they, they, they have a great uh, program there. Um, some really great instructors and uh, some really great students and a lot, lots of really wonderful art comes out um, of, you know, what, comes, what goes into and comes out of Woodstock School of Art. Thanks, Rich. You're welcome. Uh, speaking of Woodstock School of Art, this is a piece from uh, Annie Lewis. Uh, Annie lives in Kingston. This is called Landforms. It's a collagraph with collage elements. It's 14 by 11. I love this piece because it took me back to the beautiful print studio at the Woodstock School of Art, where there is a great community of artists working on their own projects and supporting each other. Some artists enjoy the power of new technology. I am not one of them. I love a blob of orange paint landing somewhere unexpected. Even the cleaning of brushes is a comforting ritual. Uh, so this is, um, this is Annie Lewis, another uh, Lewis, Yvette Lewis, who uh, was just here. Always a pleasure to see Yvette. Um, Yvette is an artist here in Socrates. This is called White Lily. It's oil on canvas, 16 by 20. Um, working from life is an approach I returned uh, to time and again. It is a way of improving skills in drawing and color to focus on what is in front of me. The whole process of choosing the vase, background, fabric, and lighting is a meditation. Uh, also, in the winter of the second year of COVID, I could be in my garden through these paintings. This is from a series. Painting the flowers was soothing as the isolation continued. I love the colors in this painting. Although they were white lilies, I could see other colors in the shadow and the highlights. And I think that she really did a beautiful job in um, portraying that. That's Yvette Lewis. Uh, next, we have uh, Marsha Lucas. Uh, Marsha, are you here? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, you are. Okay, great. Let's find you. Can you uh, hear me all right? I can, yes. You're wearing pink? Yes. I see you. All right. Welcome. Hi. 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 Thank you very much, Robert, for Absolutely. Um, welcome, welcome. For choosing my piece and Emerge and, and um, using this platform, Artsy, to help many artists who you know, can't be in the state of New York. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's, it's wonderful because the artsy really does, it literally, I mean, it opens up the, the artwork to the world. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. I, I really appreciate the opportunity for this since, um, you know, last couple of years, everything's been kind of uh, stagnant in trying to get works into yeah. other states. Yeah. Well, welcome. I'm pleased to have yeah. it. Uh, Thank, you. Cool. Thank you. So um, this uh, piece really started early 2021. Um, Things were still uh, in semi-lockdown and closed up in Michigan and especially in our area. So I still had some figure sketches. I usually like to draw the figures roughly uh, before I put them into a painting. So I've had this one around for a while and decided to put it into a painting early 2021. And 
most of my inspirations really come from as I'm working in the painting within itself. I've had to discipline myself to keep other materials around because just at the spur of the moment, I will change something. And in this, like I used a little bit of oil pastel also uh, to do some fine, more crisper lines. And um, I always have to make sure I have different materials other than my acrylic paints. Um, I have several other types of medium uh, at my reach. Um, because I do, as, as things are going along, I do change um, as, as I'm working through the pieces. So inspirations just come spontaneous to me. And it's always wonderful when that happens. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it can be at any, at any time. And then I'll take a break for a little while, maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks, and then even more. And usually that happens at 4 a.m. <laughs> I, know, I know a lot of artists that, that are like that. They do their best yeah. work at night. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This is really wonderful. Thank you. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, Marcia. Sure. Um, and uh, let's please keep in touch. Yes, absolutely. I have more on the way and um, I look forward to, you know, hopefully doing more work when I do get out to New York. I would love that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, Marcia. And uh, next we have Linda Linton. Uh, Linda Linton is an artist here in Woodstock. Uh, this is called uh, Autumn Maple. It's oil on canvas and it's a small piece, eight by six. September is always a special time, the link between summer and fall. The maples are some of the tree, the maples are some of the trees first to change color. This, I love a red maple tree, especially in the fall. Uh, this, this one was along a creek off the Silk Hill River, a young tree residing by a young stream. Whether it is through using oil paints, pastel, what? or ink with natural dyes, I am yeah. concerned with those wild and untamed, be it weeds ignoring city sidewalks or waterfalls in the wilderness. Uh, that is Linda Linton. Okay. Moving on to this page here. <laughs> Okay, uh, next we have uh, Marjorie Maggot. Uh, this is a fun piece. Uh, Marjorie lives here in um, Saugerties. This is called uh, Yellow Top. It's acrylic on canvas, 24 by 18. Um, Marjorie has a real whimsical um, uh, feel to her work. I have a, a number, I've had a number of pieces in, um, uh, in the shows over, over the years. Uh, there's a there's a uh, solo show of Marjorie's on um, my artsy site, um, which gives a nice representation of her different themes. Um, but they're all very whimsical and have a you know they're they're very lighthearted and they always make me you know make me feel good. Um, so I'm always pleased to have uh, one of Marjorie's pieces in the show, and this one's called Yellow Top. Okay, uh, next we have uh, John Mano. Uh, John is an artist in Brooklyn, New York. This is called Atonement. It's uh, photography. It's 22 by 30. A man stands alone in a vast empty hall facing a doorway that evokes a sense of power and mystery. Sunlight streams through the arched windows, creating a compositionally strong interplay of light and shadow. The large scale of the space reduces man to a small element, giving a sense of his powerlessness against what awaits him beyond. My art takes the viewer into a world that at first sight appears to exist, but then reveals itself to deviate from reality and enter a world of fantasies. Uh, this is a really beautiful photograph. Thank you, John. Dorothea, speaking of beautiful photographs, I saw this when you first posted it, um, and I'm so glad that you submitted it because it is, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Robert. Um, well, um, this is a photograph I took in Maine last summer um you know i can't take credit this is really what the sky looked like yeah there's no filters no um no messing around with it afterwards and um and i sent it out to people as kind of a a vision for 2022 because i felt there was kind of the um you know the 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 light orange the kind of color you know giving some feeling of hope and light but still the kind of ominous clouds over that and kind of you know everyone being very 
I think, tentative about making plans for the new year or resolutions or anything like that. Um, you know, that we still have this plague with us and, you know, things going on in the world, um, but there's still hope and light. And um, I really enjoyed what Richard said earlier about, you know, late blooming artists, because I'm one of those. And um, uh, I've been an art collector all my life and always, you know, I call myself an art slut because I buy so much art, but, um, you know, um, I really started showing my work with you, Robert, with the photography show you had a few years ago that I had photographs I had done in Morocco. And yeah, the Morocco um, photographs are beautiful. Yeah. And then since then, I've been doing collage. And actually, one of my other favorite works for the year, I, I, um, I tried my hand at printmaking in a class at Woodstock School of Art. And in your last show, I had a holograph. Holograph. Yeah. I liked a lot because that was you know, really trying something new. Um, but then to pick something for the best of the year, I just, you know, this photograph is the kind of thing I love because I'm very drawn to abs more abstract kind of images. Mm -hmm. And not yeah, this is the kind of photograph that, you know, it, um, it's sort of lucky to look up and see it and capture it. I, I have one of the, one, I have a, a, uh, a skyscape too, like a sunset where the, the clouds were just amazing. It just looked yeah. out of the world, you know? Um, so this is sort of one of those that, you know, it's, it's a, uh, by chance you happen to stumble across it and here it is for, for all prosperity. <laughs> Thank you. Always a pleasure to have your, your work, uh, Dorothea. Have a look at uh, Dorothea's collage work too. Um, yeah, I have um, a website, which is just my own name, Dorothea Marcus. So um, anyway. And, and, and if you're looking for a house in the area, Dorothea is the person. <laughs> is there a realtor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. Thanks for the plug. Okay. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Tally Margolin. Uh, Tally is in Brooklyn. This is called Lost Summer. It's acrylic yarn paper on unstretched canvas. Uh, it's 35 by 38. In my mixed media works, I explore the theme of the journey. I create a symbolic depiction of geographical journeys and roads of self-discovery, um, as an artist and an attempt to connect places and moments to rediscover my roots and construct new paths through constant search and creativity. Uh, this is Tally Margolin. I just want to zoom in a little bit more. The texture in this is really stunning. Uh, Laura, Laura Martinez Bianco. Uh, it's good to have Laura's work back. I have, uh, I had, uh, I think I had a few pieces in, in the blue show uh, that was last spring. Uh, Laura lives in Marlboro, New York. This is called Dust and the Blue, or Dusk and the Blues. It's encaustic on board and it's six by nine. It's inspired by the Hudson River at dusk. Uh, she, uh, Laura creates encaustic um, in her studio using using a knowledge of the landscape and referring to her planet plein air studies. Uh, the river is a constant inspiration for Laura. There's a few uh, really beautiful watercolor pieces of Laura's um, on Artsy as well uh, of, of the Hudson River. So have a look at those. Kate Masters, this is called Loss. It's acrylic on canvas. Uh, Kate is an artist uh, here in Socrates. Um, this piece is 18 by 24, and it's from the Grief series that she started in April of 2021. It's created, it was created as she witnessed her beloved sister's battle with cancer. Um, each image was made as she sought a process, uh, so, so as she sought to process and evoke the powerful and often turbulent emotions and realities um, of, of the ordeal. Uh, this piece was painted on the day that her sister had passed away. Uh, the next piece is called Prayer. It's gouache on canvas. This is by uh, John McGiff, who lives in Salt Point, New York. Uh, it's 38 by 34. I don't think you're here, John. No. Um, how does the individual mind personality grow? We are put in a school at a young age for a reason, socializing the instincts and forming a group connected self. Time spent alone, however, listening to and processing one's inner self is key. And when literature makes its way into our hands, we are in a vast community of humans. There is both peril and great growth to be had. 
here in this corner of light, edged by the family dog and talismans of family memories. Uh, Claudia Michael is next. Uh, this is uh, a oil on canvas called River's Edge. It's 16 by 20. Uh, Claudia lives in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, one of the uh, few, few artists that are out of the New York region. Uh, this work is, uh, the, the view in this work is from a section of an old rail trail on the banks of the Pis Pisatakwa River in Manchester, New Hampshire. The work is framed in a black Mac and it's a floating frame. Ingrid Nichter. Ingrid, are you here? I, I am. You in and out. You are. Okay, good. I Do you want to talk time. about this? Oh, great. We need to talk. I, I need to call you. Um, so I will be calling you very shortly. Okay. Uh, welcome. Um, thank you. So, um, okay. This is a great show and I'm really excited to be a part of it. Um, this is my piece, The Schematics of an Impending Storm. Uh, it's my favorite piece from 2021, probably for a couple of reasons. One is its size. I tend to work pretty small, but lately I've started gravitating towards larger canvases. I, like I think that. this one is um, 18 by 36, I think, which is yeah. not huge, of course, you know, compared to huge canvases. But compared to you know my usual 10 inch or eight inch canvases, it feels pretty expansive and it's a lot more room to work, which is really interesting. And size of course changes the way you interact with making the painting as well as you know how you experience the finished painting. So this piece uses a lot of the same materials that I use in my other work. Um, vintage matchbooks, you know, my favorite World War II electrical training manuals handmade papers mixed in with you know, gel and molding paste, acrylic paints and markers. Um, so you have all these little black circles that make up the approaching clouds of the, the approaching thunderstorm. And each one of those has a little collaged electrical symbol inside of it. Um, you know, the kind you use in schematic drawings of circuits, resistors, capacitors, switches, you know, that sort of thing. And the storm is forming and all these little circles with their assigned electrical components are all moving around and they're bouncing off one another as you know, the clouds roll in. And that creates you know, this constantly changing schematic of what this electrical storm is. And then of course, underneath all that activity, you've got the flowers and they're just kind of you know, hanging out among the rocks, you know, being flowers. And that is my piece. And thank you so much for having me, Robert. Thank you. I like that you're, you're uh, working on larger canvases now too. Me it's, too. It's, it's good to see, yeah. Thank you, Ingrid. Thanks. All right. Mr. Nixon, you are up, my friend. Uh, next is Will Nixon. Uh, this is pretty cool, Will. Thanks, thanks. Um, I realized this, this started at the uh, Cleveland Museum of Art, and I find when I'm in museums, I can go crazy. I, this is done with my iPhone. I feel like I can go crazy in museums because they do dim lighting and, and kind of particular lighting. Uh, and so that's what this started with, the lighting. And then I just, uh, the iPhone has all kinds of adjustments for color and tone and lighting, and all this, that. And so I just really went to town with, on the iPhone with, with, to get this effect. Um, and it's not like another picture. It's different from what I've done in the past. So uh, that's, that's what struck me about it. I thought, I, I'm not quite sure how I did it, but it, it, it doesn't look like what I usually do, which is what I like about it. Yeah, it's a happy accident, perhaps. Yeah. It's very cool. Will is a really wonderful poet too. Um, Thanks. Have a look at, at his uh, his poetry, and then also the uh, he does a guide to uh, Woodstock, also that was just revised uh, a year ago. Is that right? Two years ago, about. Two, oh, two Thanks. Jeez. Oh, yep. All right. <laughs> Time is marching on. Thanks, Robert. This is great. Yeah, always a pleasure. Good to see you, Will. Thank you. You too. Okay. Next, we've got Sandra Nystrom. Uh, this is called Red Rift 3. It is uh, oil on paper, 11 and a quarter by 15. 
Uh, Sandra lives in Woodstock. Uh, the series, uh, this is a series, one of four that was developed using four different red shades and their complementary shade of green. Uh, the inspiration for the composition was the change of seasons from summer to fall reflected in the large body of water in the pond near her studio. And the challenge was to retain the spontaneity she felt as the winds increased. And I think that she met that challenge. How about you? A uh, really beautiful work. Uh, Sandra's a wonderful abstract artist. She's been in a, a handful of shows at the gallery. Um, and you can see um, some really uh, beautiful work. Like um, she's got a really great way with color. Um, on, on, you can find them all on the gallery site. Um, okay, Jacqueline Oster. This is called Rotary. It's watercolor and a collage. Uh, Jacqueline lives in West Hurley. Uh, it, this is 12 by nine. Uh, the work is part of her vintage uh, series. Uh, next, we have Lisa Fitzner. This is a diptych. Um, Lisa does a lot of, uh, Lisa lives in, in, in Socrates. She does um, a lot of paint pouring. Uh, this is called uh, Grace. It's a diptych, as I said. It's acrylic and epoxy. Uh, acrylic and epoxy. Uh, they're two panels, uh, 20 by 10 each. Um, and this is using the Dutch pour um, method. Next, we have Susan Phillips. Susan is an artist that splits her time between Socrates and New York City. She's also uh, with uh, NAWA, National Association of Women Artists. Um, so uh, lady artists, if you're looking for a group to join, um, that is a really fantastic um, group to be involved in. Uh, there's lots of really wonderful opportunities that focus on women in the arts. Uh, so this is called Mount Tremor. It's, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Susan lives in Mount Tremor. Uh, this is called Torn Abstractions. It's a limited edition archival print, and it's from her ongoing series of found torn papers. Uh, next we have, um, this is Eileen Power. Eileen lives in Woodstock. This is called Much Ado About Everything. It's painted and torn and re-sewn canvases, metal screen, packing paper, paint, and cloth. This is one of her pandemic pieces made from uh, random items in her studio. Uh, next, we have Terry Priestner. Terry, are you here? I thought I saw you come in. You are. Oh, you're on mute. I see you. Let's bring you up. Uh, if you can unmute yourself and please tell us all about this beauty. Oh, you're on, you're on mute, Terry. No. Okay. Oh, there can you, you go. Can you hear me now, Robert? Yeah, I can hear you. I wish I could unmute you. I can mute everybody, but I can't unmute you from my end. But. Okay. <laughs> Great. Welcome. Hi. Um, thank you for having me. Um, this painting, it's called Golden Moment. Um, it's, um, I would classify it as contemporary luminism. I, it was painted from a memory. I was on my way to work maybe 18 years ago and I passed this pond that I pass every day. And it was like this golden haze was settled over everything. And naturally I didn't have a camera and it was before iPhones. So um, it's been in my mind for a long time. So this past year I decided to paint it. Um, and it isn't quite right, but it, I, it's turned out, hap I was happy with the end result, but it's quite a large painting. It's 18 by 24. Um, and <clears throat> it's um, interesting in the Northeast that we have to work with so many greens, but um, it's, <laughs> uh, like I said, it's uh, a scene I've painted before, but never quite in this manner. It's beautiful. You have you have a real um, Terry has some really wonderful uh, local landscapes, uh, mostly all oil. You pretty much work just in oil now. Yeah, uh, yeah. this one's going to be part of a series that I'm doing, working on now uh, for the next couple of months, and it's going to be rural landscapes of the Hudson Valley and the river. Uh, I live in the foothills of the Catskills, just a little north of Saugerties, uh, and there's really some pretty spots here, and I want to share that with people. Beautiful, I'd love, love to see them. 
Thank you, Terry. Always, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. There's a few other pieces of Terry's on Artsy as well. Okay. Um, next, we have um, Regina Quinn. Um, Regina lives in Gilboa, New York. This is called Summer Storm. It's in caustic and oils with bee wax over watercolors. Uh, she overlays her oils with beeswax, the top layers of encaustics, over watercolor base to achieve the luminous intensity and feel that uh, she feels that this work, which won the grand prize at Cooperstown Art Association's 2021 Essential Art Exhibit, is her best work of the year as it evokes the landscape simply with immediacy and intensity and relates to her concern about climate change without resorting to didacticism. Really beautiful work. Um, Regina does some really, really amazing things with, uh, with encaustic. I, will, I like her work a lot. Uh, you can see some more of her work on the gallery site or on the RC site. Um, Leslie Rolnick. Uh, Leslie lives in Woodstock. This is called Flora Burst. It's oil on canvas. It's 22 by 22. Uh, painting has been a lifelong pursuit and means of expressing my interior life influenced by my external reality and experiences. Painting is her personal form of spirituality, the only place where time, conscious thoughts, or preoccupations are completely suspended. Her work is a reflection of many influences on the given day or time period in her life. People, travels, experiences, intuition, dream imagery, and moods. Uh, so that is Leslie Rolnick. Uh, next, we have Barbara Adrian Rosen. Uh, Barbara is an artist in Woodstock. This is called a parallel reality. It's acrylic collage, um, metallic on handmade paper. It's nine by six. And Barbara does some really wonderful work with um, handmade papers. She has a whole series of Catskill landscapes that um, are abstract influence, but um, clearly um, uh, sort of evoke the feeling of the landscapes in the Catskill Mountains. Uh, the whole series is available on um, Artsy to, uh, to have a look at and to purchase if you'd like. Uh, they're really beautiful in person. Uh, next, we have Lynn Sable. Uh, Lynn is an artist in Winstead, Connecticut. Uh, this is called uh, Delphinums. Is that right? Uh, it's acrylic on canvas, 20 by 20. Um, I am learned, it, she is a learning and evolving as an artist, feeling and following her intuition, seeing patterns, texture, color in the abstract, a new beginning, freedom and joy in creating. Um, El Emily Sabri, um, or Sabri, Emily, are you here? Sabri, yeah. Hi, Sabri, I'm here. there we go. Where are you? All right, well, I have so much to say about this work. This was a major okay. turning point for me. Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Good okay, to cool. see you, we see you now, great. I yeah. like this. Yep. Welcome. <laughs> so I'm a portrait and mixed media artist, and I can kind of think of the skull as kind of like a later portrait. And um, I use a lot of skeletons in my work, and I used to use a lot of embroidery. And I stopped using embroidery in favor of stenciling because when you embroider each stitch by stitch by stitch, it just takes forever. So this was my first piece that I ever used stenciling and spray paint. And um, if you don't know, YOLO, Y-O-L-O, -O, means you only live once. And I'm trying to put that with the kind of the memento mori, the reminder of death, because the way that I deal with complex situations and big emotions is inappropriate humor. So I'm kind of like using some traditional art and some humor. And if you can see it in the light, it is very reflective and it makes the skull kind of pop nice. off the surface a little bit. Yeah. And I just had so much fun with this. This is my favorite piece because it's like the piece that launched a thousand other ideas. It's from a series, right? Yes, it's there's a series, series of five. Series of of five. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and they all sort of follow the, the, um, the same theme of YOLO? Um, they're all different or? skulls. Um, they all have the same background and they're all like the 12 inch square. So they would look nice in a big line. Yeah, the, the, the graphics are wonderful, Thank really you. nice. Thank you so much, Emily, good to see you. you. Okay, um, next is uh, Jesse Sanchez. Uh, Jesse, are you here? Yeah, I'm here, Robert. 
You are. Okay. Let's find you. Uh, oh, I see you. Yep. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I love the green in this. That's a uh, chartreuse, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's a painting. It's 24 by 24. I, I used house paint and, um, and a thin plywood. I was applying the color in a way um, that I thought would work. Um, it's like a, I put paint on a roller, different colors, and I rolled it across the wood. And I got some nice effects because it was blending. And I got kind of a, a rainbow effect using that technique. But after a while, it got a little muddy. So I picked up the brightest color I had in my palette and dragged it across the canvas and um, or the wood panel. And this is this is what happened. Um, you know, it's inspired by process. All my work lately is a response to uh, some art therapy that I had uh, taken part in. In other words, like uh, process, not product. And it opened up a whole kind of dynamic for me. And I, I really just went to town. I don't know if you can see some of these pieces. Yeah. Behind. Um, but because of the, I think a success of this piece, just layering with color and finally just hitting it with a, a bright color, it really, um, I decided I'd take that process and try to expand on it. And I'm, I'm making now four feet by four feet pieces. Wow. So I think, you know, I sold one recently and I, I'm just really excited about this whole, um, you know, um, finding my own way to put paint down on a surface. Um, I, I keep experimenting and, and, uh, but I think I'm, I'm in a groove and I, I really am excited about what happened with this piece. Um, that's why it's my, my favorite, um, you know, and as far as generally my inspiration, uh, like a lot of people have said nature, um, I feel we're, we're connected all of us in a, in a very deep centered way. And I think when we're painting from a, a real emotional core, I think we're, at least for me, I feel connected to just about, you know, everything that exists, even creation. And it really helps, uh, um, you know, my mindset, um, my emotional life. And uh, again, it, it's about discovery and something happened in this painting. That's why I like it. Uh, it works really well. I mean, it, it is, it's really striking. I think you've, you've, you've hit on something that I hope, I hope you continue on with this. Yeah. Thank um, you. And I really like the fact that, uh, again, it's come up a couple of times of artist therapy. Um, that, you know, I mean, art is really, um, I, I, one of my previous jobs was working at an art gallery that was for adults with traumatic brain injuries. And I saw, you know, really firsthand how art can be uh, transforming for some people. Um, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, art, you know, people, people use art in, in therapy in many, many different ways. So um, I'm glad to, to see, um, you know, people working through um, with, with, through art. Yeah, yeah, I think thank you. That's um, yeah. That's the uh, uh, that's why the piece is is the way it is. Um, yeah. That's why I wanted to do it, and um, I think recovery happens uh, can happen through art only because you are thinking about the emotions and uh, sure. not so much the result. But how sure, you feel. and it shows. Yeah, you thank know, there's, there's definitely a lot of emotion in this. Uh, thank you so much, Jesse. I'd love to see some more. Oh, great. Okay. All right. Appreciate thank it. you so much. Take okay. care now. Uh, Dominic Santis. Uh, Dominic lives in Beacon. This is called Over the Hill. It's watercolor on paper. And I'm here. Robert. Oh, you are. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah, I got a little. Oh, great. I'm glad. Cross communication, you. but yes. Yep. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, go for it. Love this piece. Um, thank you again for including a piece. It's honored. Um, yeah. This is a part of a bigger series that goes back 10 years now. Um, the, the reason why I put this piece in was that it was a big, you know, not, not exactly the same kind of moment that Jesse was just describing, but it, it was a change in how I was approaching them, the, the series, um, color-wise, texture-wise. Um, so it just stood out to me. It was, it's over the past two years, I've, you know, included a few, or past year, I should say, included a few of these pieces in various shows. Um, and everyone else gets to input, and it was nice to be the sole decision maker on this one because um, I got to react to what had uh, 
been a change for me in the series. So. This was the piece that you had in the small show as well was part of the series. Too, yes, right? it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dominic has a, a smaller piece. Um, a, another landscape. It's that. It, um, yeah. It's a, it's part of a big, I mean, now I think I'm up to 60 or 70 pieces now of, of the series. Wow. Um, Wonderful. Oh, I'd love to see more. Oh, anytime. Uh, I'm glad you joined us, Dominic. That was a nice surprise. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I wasn't expecting you. Good. Okay. Uh, who's next? Oh, Martina. Uh, Martina Sestakova. Uh, this is called uh, Connecting with Others. It's acrylic on, acrylic on Yupo. Um, I really like the way people are using Yupo. Um, and I would love to do a show of just Yupo. Do a lot of, a lot of you artists, have, have you tried working on Yupo before? I think it gives some really, um, you know, some pretty good effects. Uh, this is eight by 10, it's matted to 11 by 14. Uh, Martina says, 2020 and 2021 were years of consideration. How do we relate to each other when physically connected uh, connection is limited? This painting captures the idea of fluidity, of adjusting to life stages, and of being flexible and open. Uh, next, we have Rita Sherry. Rita is an artist that lives in Kingston. Uh, this is a silk screen um, and ink. It's called Giraffe at Sunset. It's 11 by 14. Um, it was done with, um, it's a silk screen with the addition of ink drawing, which makes each print in, unique and individual. She were, Rita works in a variety of media um, and often mixed media. She, uh, she's used giraffes in a number of different media and other, others as well. There's a really great rhino um, of, of Rita's that's up there. Um, Rita does a, a, as she said, she does a number of different, uh, uses different materials, mixed media. She does some sculpture, a little bit of everything. Um, so there's some, uh, lots of her work on the gallery site as well. Uh, Pat Sinatra. Pat, you're here. I think you are. Hi, there. hi Robert. Nice to oh, see hi, you. Hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. Welcome. Thank you. Um, let me just point out first thing about this piece that it's incorrectly titled. It's a typo. This oh. is called Kingdom City, not Kingdom. So, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that is a typo. I okay. have Kingdom City in my database. I'll make, I'll make that correction. Sorry about that, Pat. Thank you. Uh, that's all right. Um, I'm a, a, a Xena artist and um, I could go on about this, but it's probably better to read it online, the long winded version. Um, I could give you a short, so shorter synopsis, which is I've been um, painting in encaustics for about a decade. And with the pandemic, um, it threw me into really exploring the medium way more than I had previous years. Um, last year, January, 2021 is when I painted this piece and I was really trying to rack my brain with something to truly symbolize winter. And this was a memory that kept coming back to me. So I decided to paint it. Um, all of last year, I was painting places that were far away. So they were bits of uh, escapism for me. So, um, I consider this my best piece of work of last year because most of the other ones that I considered my best work fortunately sold. So <laughs> this year That's I'm a good uh, thing. Yeah. And um, I'm starting to move more towards abstracted uh, landscapes. So thank you for including me. Absolutely. I really like the uh, the texture that you can you see going on over here, especially. Really beautiful. I'm a big fan of encaustic and uh, this is a beautiful one. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next we have Janet Siskin. Uh, Janet is an artist in Accord. We've got a few, few artists in Accord this time around. Uh, this is called Tribal. It's a monotype, uh, 16 by 12. Printmaking has endless possibilities. This monotype is the result of experimenting with solid versus broken color, opaque versus transparent. The image was spontaneous, developed with brayers of several sizes and Azuka ink. Next, we have uh, Doug Smith. This is photography. Uh, it is 10 by 14. Doug lives in, is an artist in New Jersey. 
Uh, this image is the result of deliberate or accidental use of an idea. The fundamental concept of separating the grays to produce the image remains the foundation of my art while inclusion of color, shad and shadow, dimensions, and angle complement the print rather than providing a barrage of new techniques to simulate the viewer's perception. So this is Doug Smith, uh, it's called Paper. Uh, next we have Jan Sosnowitz. Uh, this is called Dirty Pink and jo uh, Jan lives in Boyceville, New York. This is oil on paper, it's 10 by seven and inspired by the Dia show of John Chamberlain's metal sculptures. Uh, next, we have Sandra Spilnik, Spilk, I'm sorry, Sandra. Uh, this is a really beautiful collage. Uh, Sandra lives in Rhinebeck. This is called In Motion. It's a collage. It's paper, sumi ink, pastel, acrylic markers, and leaves. And I think there's some thread in here as well. Uh, it's 10 and a quarter by eight. Um, she also often works with organic shapes and textures as she's inspired by nature. She's influenced by many genres, particularly the mid-century abstract impressionists and the Japanese concept of wabi-sabi, perhaps because both embrace the beauty of imperfection. Uh, so that is, um, that's the last for that one. We just got a few more to go. Thank you everyone for hanging in there. Um, we're running a little behind, um, but we just have a handful more, okay. Uh, next, we have Judy Stanger. Uh, Judy is an artist over in Stone Ridge. This is called Desert Cactus. Uh, Judy does some really wonderful pastels. I was really, really surprised to get this because most of her work I know from, um, she, uh, uh, it's mostly Cape Cod uh, landscapes and seascapes. So um, I was really pleased and surprised to see um, this desert piece um, by Judy. Uh, this piece was painted in the desert in Arizona and reimagined last month when it was juried into the Arizona Pastel Society show in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, some really wonderful work by uh, Judy on Artsy as well. Uh, next, we have Cindy Sumerano. Uh, Cindy is an artist in Hurley. This is called Midwestern Madonna. It's acrylic on canvas and it's 20 nor 29 by 26. Um, my, this, is, this is a favorite of hers from the year. She struggled with this one, but she loves the light in the expressions in the final version. Um, her most recent work has been an exploration of the preciousness of the mundane and a seeking answers to uh, nagging questions. What do we value? What do we record? Um, where is the evidence of the human connection, care and tenderness we show each other in our utmost regarded moments? And this certainly shows uh, that. So this is Cindy Sumerano. Uh, this is, um, the next piece is by Arlene Santana Thornton. Arlene lives in Columbia County, New York. Uh, this is called After the Deluge. It's acrylic on aluminum and it's 18 by 18. It's inspired by the Hudson River flooding. Uh, it's part of a series. Uh, as a painter, she is in love with the natural world. She finds that rivers and the landscapes around them constantly appear in her work. She responds to the beauty of the Hudson Valley area where she lives but she also paints through memories of other parts of the world in which she has lived almost always near rivers. Uh, so this is a um, abstract piece by um, Arlene. Next we have uh, Pam Tucker. Uh, this is a fun piece that I, I was really pleased to get from Pam. Pam lives in um, Hyde Park, New York. This is a little different than what I know her work to be. Uh, it's called Summer Social, it's oil on canvas. It's 18 by 24. And it was inspired by a photograph that she took of a group socializing on a summer afternoon. Uh, since the pandemic, she has developed a special love of observing people in, it, people interacting with one another. On this afternoon, she was in a park and turned around to see this group of ladies enjoying themselves. They were quilting collective and enjoying and, and clearly enjoyed color. Especially against the green backdrop of lawn and trees, their brightly colored clothing was a lively, playful patchwork. And I think she really captured that really nicely, uh, especially in the colors are, are really beautiful. Um, next, we have Serena Whale. Uh, Serena, are you here? No? Uh, Serena lives in Saugerties. This is called Bejeweled. It's acrylic and mixed media on canvas and it's six by six. Um, she creates mostly small, colorful, one of a kind pieces imbued with positive energy, joy, and inspiration. 
Uh, next, we have um, an, an acoustic piece by J.D. Weiss. Uh, J.D. is an artist, photographer, artist um, living in Woodstock. Um, you, most people probably know her from her really uh, beautiful photography. She's a traditional two and a quarter film uh, and camera, uh, but she's been really dabbling lately in encaustics. And I think that she's really, um, you know, she's uh, really capturing in the encaustics and her paintings, what the, you know, the beauty that she captures in her photographs. Uh, please have a look at uh, work by J.D. Weiss on the gallery site, some stunning foot photography. Uh, next, we have Anna West. This is called Last Summer. And I'm uh, here. And are you here? You are. Yes, great. I am. Um, I, I did a, for several years, I've been doing a swimming pool surfer series. And then last spring, I was in a very serious car accident, short version, my left rear tire exploded while I was going at least 70. And a dump truck plowed into me and I saw bits of my life. And then there was actually a moment of heaven or whatever. And then the car was rolling over and I survived. I was in ICU for a while. So my swimming paintings ended up taking this turn of it's celebrating life, the mystery of what happens. And so there's a series within the series. So this is actually one of the representing that bit of life and death and survival. It's really, I mean, it, I could see survival in this piece. Thank you. Definitely. Um, uh, really beautiful. I mean, it's. It, it, I think you've really captured an emotion here that many of us, especially, are feeling now um, through the last couple of years. Um, I think a lot of us, whether it you know um, it, it it be from COVID or from some personal issues, have been really experiencing this this whole feeling. Um, so it's a it's a it, it's it's. I sort of see it after, especially after hearing your story, as a um, you know a, a an emotional feeling, both good and and sad. Um, there's a, there's a freeingness to it and there's, and, and I also see it, it, it's a little bit of a confinement as well. Um, oh, but I mean, that's my own personal interpretation. of it. <laughs> That's me putting myself into it. Um, in, in any case, it's, it's, it's really beautiful and I'm really pleased to have it, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much. I always like water pieces. Okay. Um, and then, uh, we have a, a piece by Jay Youngdahl. This is called, uh, the subtle beauty of a creative life. Uh, Jay lives in, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. This is photography 16 by 20. It was taken at the sunrise on masters Bayou in Tampa Bay. Um, I did a show of Jay and Leslie Bozzi's work over the summer, um, and they were both exploring um, the whole idea of, of gold. So there's a number of Jay's photographs um, that you can, you can have a look at on, on RC that explore the idea of our relationship to gold. Um, and then finally, our last piece, um, I don't have many Zs, but here is one. Uh, Jill Zaccardi, uh, this I like a lot. Um, another, another cactus piece. This is, uh, Jill lives in Highland Park. This is called Prick. It's oil on canvas with a copper canvas tax. It's 26 by 22. Um, it's fabric and it's painted out. Um, uh, it's painted fabric. Uh, the big cactus is all painted. There is no stamping in this one. She wanted something prickly on the frame's edge to refer to the thorns of the cat, the thorns of the cactus. Um, even though this title refers to a male, it seems that it is also a men's language. Do women have authority in language? Is there such a thing as women's language? She uses upholstery fabric as a canvas for her paintings and chooses each fabric specifically to inform the subject of the image. Um, so this is uh, called Prick. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really stunning. Uh, so that is our show. Um, we, um, there's a hundred pieces. We got through it in a little 10 minutes over. Uh, sorry about that folks. Um, but I gotta say, um, I would definitely do this show again. I, cause the, the work that came in, um, was really, really beautiful. Um, I had to turn down a handful of artists as well. I didn't really want to go over more than a hundred artists. Um, but um, I probably could have done another show too with, um, with, with, with the, the other pieces that I got. Uh, just a testament to how much talent we have up here in the Hudson Valley, uh, New York metropolitan area. 
Um, again, uh, the gallery has been closed for the month. I'm taking this time to sort of get things in order, repaint the walls, do all fun stuff. Uh, but we, I will be open uh, again next Saturday with a brand new show, Exit 20, work by Saugerties Artists. Um, in the meantime, please have a look at the Artsy Shop. Um, have a look at the Best in Show uh, work. You could read more from each of the artists that we talked about. I'm really, really thrilled that so many artists were able to join me today. A uh, couple surprises, people that I weren't expecting to join me. So um, thank you um, for coming. Um, I always like hearing, um, always prefer to hear directly from the artist than he, hear me rambling. So um, again, thank you for another really great show. Um, we still got a whole, I don't know, uh, another whole other month, uh, more than a month. So, uh, please have a look. A couple pieces have sold. So if, um, if you are interested in one or two or five of the pieces that are in the show, uh, grab them up now because, um, they're, they're going to go pretty quick. And that's one thing that I got to say as an art collector myself, many times I have, um, gone back to purchase something that, um, I really wanted, um, and it's gone. So, um, you know, always, always, uh, think of, um, your first impression as the right one. Anyway, thanks everybody. Uh, cheers to a really wonderful, um, uh, 2022. Yes, 2022, my years are mixing. Um, and um, yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, this, has, uh, this has been a great show. Again, have a look at it, have, some, have a look at some of the archived work. Um, if you enjoy these discussions, uh, I've been doing, I started them up since COVID started in 2020 and we've been doing one for every show. So um, have a look on the uh, Emerge Gallery site and you can hear lots of artists talk about um, their, um, their work and um, see some really great stuff. So uh, thanks everyone again, have a great week, have a, uh, a wonderful um, everything. All right, guys, take Thank care. You, Robert. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Good luck in your new home.